Alright, it's Unchained Skid with you again, back by popular demand. After that last video about how money is created, uh, there was some uh, questions about what is quantitative easing, so that's what we'll talk about today. I'm going to get this done really quickly today because actually my California trip is coming right up where I'm going to be going down there and doing lots of cycling, motorcycling, scuba diving, camping, flying, the whole nine yards, all for your viewing pleasure later on on the channel. All right, before we get started, let me do a plug for a few things. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy a mug. You can buy my awesome story, The Really in Raven. Or you can play my awesome uh, computer game, The Caves of Jenks Rather, which is totally, totally free. Uh, love to have you take a look. What you can do in addition to, which would be really helpful, is put on any of those cycling or motorcycling videos I have and just leave them in the background as you're doing something else and uh, let the view time go on that, that would really help the channel because it's not so much the likes, it's how long you stay on a video. So just leaving one of those in the background would really help. Okay, let's get to it. What is quantitative easing? In a nutshell, quantitative easing is the Fed creating central bank reserves to purchase long-term treasury securities to stimulate the economy. Okay, video's done. Just kidding. Let's break this all down and see what this all means. The first thing that we're going to talk about is this part about creating central bank reserves. The first question that you might have is, okay, if they're purchasing all these T-bills, or uh, treasury securities, are they creating more money? Are they, what is this purchasing stuff? Is $80 billion going in every day? What, what, what's happening? So in fact, when the Fed creates these central bank reserves, it purchases the treasury securities with them. There is no money being created. It would be like making a uh, $100 bill to buy 520s. So you give the 100 and you put the 520s away somewhere. It's not changing anything. Remember from the other video, central bank reserves and treasury securities are both forms of US dollar currency. So when the Fed purchases the treasury securities, and create central bank reserves, there's no new money being put in the system. These are taken away and these are put in. What in effect is one changes for the other. And there's less treasury securities in, the, in circulation, more central bank reserves. And we'll talk about what effect that has later. But it is not inherently inflationary in terms of money supply. But we'll talk more about what is inflationary about it later. Now, just to review how the Fed actually does this, now remember, the Treasury is the one that makes the Treasury securities. It creates these in order to pay for the deficit. Can the Fed buy from the Treasury directly? No, it cannot, remember, by law. So remember, the Treasury securities are sold on the open market. All kinds of people buy these, including banks, but many others as well. So when the Fed does quantitative easing and it buys these uh, Treasury securities, it buys them on the open market. So it doesn't necessarily... Just because the Fed is doing this doesn't mean more treasury securities are being created. In fact, they're more than likely not. The Fed is just buying them on the open market. So to further reinforce that, it's taking treasury securities out of circulation and putting in central bank reserves. Okay? Now you might just uh, pause to consider here for a second, who handles all these transactions? Well, there's a specific set of dealers who have the authority to do this kind of stuff given to them by the uh, US government. They have a specific charter to be able to trade this stuff around. I don't know about you, but these guys are probably the shareholders over here. Food for thought. All right, next point. Okay, let's talk about, we talked about creating the central bank reserves. We talked about how they purchase them. So let's talk about long-term. Why is this important? Why do we want long-term uh, securities to purchase? Because the Fed has direct control over short-term. Now this is the subject for an entirely different video about how they control this. In fact, we'll take a little sidebar right now. How they used to control uh, short-term interest rates was by restricting central bank reserves. So the banks used to need more central bank reserves 
in order to meet the legal limits for their fractional reserve banking. They need less now. So there was more demand in the past to have central bank reserves. So that demand was there. The Fed would control the supply, so supply and demand. Uh, cost of central bank reserves is actually the interest rate to have them. So by restricting the supply on central bank reserves, the Fed was controlling what the short-term interest rates were. However, since they started doing quantitative easing, the market's completely flooded full of central bank reserves, so they can't do it that way anymore. How they do it is a subject, again, for a completely different video. We get into reverse repo rates, all kinds of stuff of that, and repo doesn't mean taking your car away. It means a repurchase agreement. Don't want to talk about it right now. It's beyond the scope. Suffice it to say, the Fed can control short-term rates very, very easily, but they cannot control long-term rates. The market controls long-term rates, and by that we mean 10 years plus. So any kind of financial instrument, bond, security that goes beyond 10 years, the interest rate that's going to pay it on that, the Fed can try to do stuff with that, but it doesn't go out that far. The market determines what it's going to be. So why is the Fed trying to do this? Well, let's get into that. Okay. At any one time, there's only so many long-term securities out there for to, in the market to be able to buy. Yes, I know the Treasury's creating more of them all the time because the debt increases, but at any one moment in time, there's only so many. That's the supply, okay? If the Fed starts buying a whole bunch of them, that's demand, right? Supply and demand. If the Fed is buying these like there's no tomorrow, it means there's less of them available to buy. If other people still want to buy them, which they do, it's going to drive the price up. So by the Fed buying all kinds of long-term securities, just by the effects of supply and demand, the price of the securities goes up. With me so far? What has that got to do with anything? Getting to it. Okay, when it comes to a long-term security, any kind of security, but in this particular case, a long-term treasury security, the price of the security and the interest rate that it pays are negatively correlated, which is to say that if the price goes up, the interest rate goes down. Now, how does that work? The easiest way to understand that is to take a $100 bond, bond being a treasury security, and say that, well, Let's say that you bought a $100 bond that had a one-year term on it, and at the end of the term, the bond was going to pay out $110. So you can see from simple math that we can all do, that's 10%. So the interest on that bond is 10%. Now, you might sell that bond to somebody and say, well, I don't want to hold it that long, I want to sell it to somebody. Okay. If there happened to be a big demand to have these bonds, okay, because the Fed was buying all kinds of them and there wasn't very many around and people need them for other things, don't want to get into it, the price of this bond might go up. And if the price of the bond went up to $105, okay, just saying that you could sell it to somebody for 105 bucks, it's still going to be redeemed at the end of that year for 110 the interest now, it's not quite 5%, it's a little bit less, I get from math, is going to be around 5%. Okay? So the interest rate on this bond has come down, the effective interest rate on this bond. You say, well, that's for that bond. Okay, well, multiply this by billions across an entire market where people are buying and selling this all the time. Bottom line, when you increase the price of a bond, a treasury security, any kind of security, you decrease the interest rate. And the reverse is also true. If the, the price went down, the interest rate would go up. So the Fed is buying long-term treasury securities to drive the price of them up, which makes the interest rate go down. Why is that important? We'll get to that in a second. Okay, so we've taken these treasury securities and we've driven the long-term interest rates down. Why does that stimulate the economy? Because other loans that are of a similar nature are going to be based on 
what the treasury securities are paying. Treasury securities are kind of a benchmark. So anybody else going, let's say you want to start a business and you need to borrow some money to do it. If I can go to the bank and get a loan to start my business and the loan is less, so I want a loan and I got to pay certain interest on the loan. If that interest is less, then I don't have to pay as much to get my business going. So the theory is, especially, so keep in mind that if you're going to start a business, you need a long-term loan. I don't need a loan that's overnight. I need a loan that's going to be maybe five to 10 years. If I can have the interest rate down on it, my overhead is less. And that means now that it's easier to start my business. That's why having the interest rate on the long-term securities go down stimulates the economy. Sorry, there's a whole lot of wind going on out here today, is what it is. Let's say that again without the wind coming by. If I want a loan, if the interest rate is less on the loan, it makes my business more profitable. Having long-term interest rates lower, in theory, stimulates the economy. All right, that's why and what is going on. Now, the question is, does this actually work? When they first started doing this, people were very, very, very concerned about this. They thought it was going to do this. Have a lot of inflation. Why? So they thought that with all those central bank reserves kicking around in the banking system, it would cause inflation because the banks would be flush with central bank reserves. They could loan out as much as they want. All of a sudden, there'd be way too much money in the system, not as a result of more central bank reserves, but a bunch more bank deposits. If you remember the other video, bank deposits based on fractional reserve banking uh, have to have central uh, bank reserves to base them on. However, this didn't seem to happen, at least not because of that. What did happen though, is that it's easy to get a loan, which is to say that the interest rate is very low. You still have to qualify the loan, that's fine, but the interest rate is low. And also, a little bit the effect, because there's more central bank reserves out there, the bank's probably uh, a lot more liquid and more likely to give it to you. Regardless, the theory was that these loans were going to be used to build the economy. Okay, by businesses starting up and using that money, capital. But instead, people use these loans to buy stuff. And those stuff were investments. I'm gonna come over here and make this easier. To buy investments. Because if you can get a loan to buy an investment, you're doing what's called leveraging. If I wanted to say buy some stocks, why well, use my own money when I could get a loan from the bank? If I could get a loan from the bank for 3%, but I'm making 10% on the stock market, 7% is all mine. The lower the interest rate is on this loan, the better this prospect is to buy stuff. So all kinds of folks, use the fact that the long-term interest rates were lower to buy things like stocks, houses, tuition. So whereas there wasn't, this quantitative easing did not cause a generalized inflation in the entire market, it did inflate the absolute crap out of asset prices. So that's why your stock market is riding so high, why houses are so high, and stuff people need like tuition is so high. It's because of this. So was there a negative effect? Yes, but it shows up here. That's really all there is to it. There's not much more to say about it. In review, quantitative easing is the Fed creating central bank reserves which it uses to purchase long-term treasury securities to stimulate the economy. In the creation of the central bank reserves, we're not actually making more money because as the central bank reserves go into the economy, the treasury securities come out and they're both forms of currency, not money, currency. We've talked about how they buy them on the open market. We've talked about why they do long-term because the Fed can't control long-term directly, it tries to do it indirectly. 
by buying all these long-term securities, it drives the price up. When it drives the price up of securities, it drives the interest rate down. If the interest rates of the treasury securities are down or the long term, then other long term loans have their interest rates go down as well to keep up with the market. Having long term loan interest rates be down, it's in theory going to stimulate the economy because it's easier to start a business. However, what really happened, as opposed to stimulating the economy, is that people took out, people, institutions, dealers, took out a bunch of loans at low interest rates to purchase. Uh, investments, stock market, houses, etc. And that's why those prices have gone through the roof. Hope this helps with explaining quantitative easing. Thanks for joining me. Spread the information far and wide, folks. Talk to you soon.